Mr Chair. And I'll also be supporting the, the amendment. Um, and, and we've been talking about high profile cases. And we've mentioned it before. And even the one on in Limerick, Jessica Sheehy, gone on over three years. High profile case, not have been dealt with. And again, where people are making complaints and, and people are making complaints as, as was said by other speakers there. There was a petition signed there, there not so long ago, Minister, that 15,490 people have been on trolleys in, in Limerick in 2022. The fil figures were calculated by the INMO and the research says, and this is what scares me, the research says that a person that is in a trolley or in a chair for more than five hours, if you take it on the basis of every, uh, every 82 people, one person dies. One person dies if they spend five out of 82 people. And if you're on it between six hours and 12 hours, they say in a basis of over 72 people, one person dies. And we are here on a daily basis and people are ringing us about making complaints about different services and clinicians and saying that they didn't get the proper care. It's time now, and I do appreciate that certain things have changed, but it's not good enough. And when you have people from the medical profession that have asked you to make sure that, that people can ha and have a, a, a proper framework that they can complain, and that goes from not only people that are patients, relatives, but also the health workers, that they can actually make, make a, a complaint for the safety of the patients that were in under their own system. And from the last point that we had there recently in, in UHL where, where the, the um, HICWA came in and they looked at this, a reporter said that there should be no more trolleys, uh, uh, p patients on trolleys. But yet if, if HICWA were able to go in on, uh, and, and on spec like they can with a nursing home into a hospital service, they will see tonight that there is trolleys inside the wards because they've been told to keep them out of the A&Es to keep the numbers down because of the media presence. So they've now moved the trolleys into wards. And now the, the nursing staff are telling us that it's not safe. So we have to listen to the medical profession. People have to have the right to, of the, their, their concerns of their loved ones in hospitals and their loved ones that they, they can actually make a complaint and, and have a process that they can act where there's accountability going forward. There has to be accountability when it's coming into the lives of people. Uh, and I won't delay on this uh, any longer, Minister, but I, I have one just here. It's where a patient on a trolley for, for, was, um, for treatment were given the oxygen was in a barrel and they had to get a porter to come and change the, 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 the unit for the oxygen. And while they were waiting, the patient died while waiting because they hadn't the proper oxygen system for them on the plug-in system. He died on a trolley while waiting for oxygen in a hospital. So they have to have the right and they have to have the mechanism where we can learn. It's learning to fix these problems. And unless they're, they're learned from, and unless they're reported, and people have a, a proper process to report this, nothing will learn. And it comes back to accountability and structure. Thank you. Margaret Laskin Corla. This is something we need to do, but we've got to do it right. It is being looked at. Dr. Scally quite rightly pointed it out. We've discussed it before. Um, but we have to do it right. So there is extensive work going on around new complaints policies, uh, including legislative change. There needs to be funding allocation. There will need to be training. There will need to be uh, clinical governance pathways put in place. There is an entire um, process that has to be put in place for the patient to make sure that those complaints are dealt with in the right way, dealt with in a way that's appropriate for the patient. Um, so yes, it's important, but it's also important that we do it right. And so a commitment that I would like to give to colleagues is um, a session with myself, a session with uh, Department of Health officials to discuss the work that's already happened and where we're at in terms of bringing forward new legislation. But critically, we're not looking at just, you know, looking at this clause within the 2004 Act. There may be much wider 
changes to the 2004 Act, there, may, there will be additional um, legislation being brought in to provide for clinical complaints. I imagine we're all agreed on the requirement for patients to be able to make complaints related to clinical issues. I think there's probably a very interesting story behind how that clause managed to find its way into the 2004 Act. Um, so I agree entirely with the intent, um, but I would ask colleagues to, to, to take it in good faith that we have to do it right, and I'd certainly be very happy to facilitate a meeting with department officials uh, soon, uh, and uh, either informally or, with the, uh, or, or formally through the Health Committee to get feedback on this specific issue um, so that it's done properly with policy, with funding, with um, the requisite training, with clinical governance, and with whatever legislative changes are required, which I believe will probably include this, but will go further uh, than this. Gurmagath. Minister, I'll also be supporting the amendment, but I, I just ask one question. If you, if you looked at the, the legal expense that, that you've incurred while trying to f fight off cases within within the, the, the HSE systems, right, and within government, of, of incidents that could have been learned from and admitted to and worked from it for the future. If you worked on what it has cost the state in legal fees, and when, when we could use it as a learning curve, as I said, that people say, listen, right, we got it wrong, we've got to fix it. Uh, we'll learn from this and we'll move on. Take in what you've spent in legal fees fighting this thing and holding it in the court for years. I guarantee you it would, it would actually be less than what, what um, it would be more than what it would cost that if people came out and said, listen, we got things wrong. We need to fix it. We need to make sure that this doesn't happen again. But if you look at the legal fees for the last number of years, I guarantee it would exceed the cost of what we've actually used to fight this. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, I accept the, the, uh, the good intent um, within this, and, and that's fine. I, I would just reiterate, this is not a bill about complaints. It's a bill about open disclosure and regulation. So at the moment, this bill, I want to be very clear, the open disclosure in this bill does cover clinical incidences, obviously, right? The issue in the 2004 Act is not about open disclosure. It's about who you complain to. And in the 2004 Act, what it says is if a patient wants to make a complaint about a clinical issue, it does it through the professional body, and a non-clinical issue goes to the HSE. That's what the Act says. And the argument being put forward here is the complaint, the clinical complaint, shouldn't go to the professional body, it should go to the HSE. So to be clear, that's what the amendment deals with. It has nothing to do with the right to know, the right to be told the truth, nothing. All of those issues are covered in this bill under open disclosure. I want to be very clear. So we can disagree on, on whether we do, you, you, you change the rules around complaining to professional bodies versus the HSE. Clearly it's not within the remit of this bill. Um, it is something that needs to be looked at. Uh, if, if we were to do it now, it would raise serious issues around what are the processes. So in fact, what it would end up doing is disempowering patients, because at the moment at least there are governance processes in place, in place where the complaint goes to the professional bodies. If you simply remove that, what governance would be in place? What protection for the patients would be in place? What transparency and accountability would be in place? The answer, none. There'd be none. So you'd actually be, you'd actually be, exposing, to a you'd actually be body. exposing the patient to not being able to uh, use the processes that are in place. Now I think we all agree that the complaint, whilst maybe it should still go to the professional body, it should also be something that is dealt with by the HSE. It's, it's, it is not within the remit of this bill. It is something that has to be looked at in a way that works for patients. Thank you. Simply deleting a specific subclause in the 2004 Act will not work, you, will not actually we're, we're give us what we want uh, for patients. Okay.